Welcome to Western Pomerania. This region of Poland up in the northwest is wonderful. And this video is just going to showcase uh, some of the cities that I managed to visit while I was here. It was probably the biggest trip that I've done in Poland so far and has really inspired me to do similar as I can. There really is a wide variety to see in this part of Poland. There's a lot of history, there's a lot of nature, and there are a lot of wonderful places to see in the cities. This video is going to be a bit of a summary. I will be doing individual videos about the places, but I just wanted to highlight what I, sh what I saw while I was out there to give you a bit of a taste of what's to come and also to tell you a bit about the journey. So this isn't going to delve deep into the history. That will come in the future videos. For now, I really just want to talk about my trip and tell you how much fun it was. So please enjoy. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions. The main one to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video. You could subscribe to my channel. You could follow me on Facebook or Instagram or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. So, as I've indicated, this is the northwestern region in Poland. Of course, I could not visit every city, every town in this area, but I tried to do the highlights. So I went up to Gdansk, spent a night there. Then I went over to Kishalin, spent a couple of nights there. Kowobzeg, Szczecin, Stargard, and Wolin. These were all places of distinct character. And I'm just going to walk you through my impressions of these cities. So Gdansk, of course, is touted as one of the best cities in Poland. It's incredibly beautiful. You know, it's right by the sea. It's a city that has been protected over the years. I've already done a video on this. I may have to do another one in the future because there's just so much to see here. But you have such wonderful museums, wonderful places to go. And on this trip, I was basically walking around with a bit of a heavy backpack waiting until I could get into my hostel. And the weather I got pretty lucky with uh, the forecast before this trip was not great and I was like oh my god what's it going to be like but no uh, nature decided to smile on me in the end but this port city really is a must see if you want to see Poland it really has so much variety so much beauty and just all these nice little surprises um, as you go around. I've been here three or four times now, and I honestly think there's still a big trip to come in this uh, city, but maybe I'll give it another year or so, because <laughs> um, I seem to be coming here every year at the moment. But I really just uh, wanted to enjoy the city once again, break up the journey, and make the most of the trip I had and discover a couple of new bars in the process. There's always room for that. Now, with Gdansk, as I say, I've done it before, so I didn't focus too much here. I wanted to focus on the places I haven't been before. So from Gdansk, 
I took the train over to Kashalin. Now, Kashalin, completely new to me. I didn't know what to expect. I tried to do my research before going on these trips, but all in all, you can never fully prepare yourself for any of these places because they all have their unique structure. They're all the unique places to see. And Kashalin was no exception. From the tourist office, they gave me a, a very handy map uh, with, you know, all of the historical points of interest uh, to go and explore. They gave me um, further maps of the region as well uh, to give me ideas for future trips. There's so much kind of medieval and neo-Gothic architecture available to see. And really, it is a testament to the history of Poland. And so I look forward to telling that story in more detail. It's also a very green city. In a way, it reminded me a little bit of Olsztyn because there were some incredible parks dotted around as well, of course, as a cathedral here you see in the center. There was a lovely square with, uh, you know, these great water effects. All these incredible buildings dotted around. But the thing about Kashalin is it's a little bit of a sleepy town. Um, all the bars were closed by 11. So it's not a place to party, but it is a place to relax. And I certainly did here. One of my... Uh, little excursions, because there were a couple you can do from here, at least that I indulged in, uh, was to go over to, well, they call it a mountain, but I think it's a little generous. And you get there and you have this uh, amazing tower that you can climb. And at the top, you get an incredible view, you know, 360 uh, degree view of the surrounding area. So you get a nice view of Kishalan here. Yeah, sure. This trip involved a lot of walking. It was, um, yeah, it was quite exhausting, to be honest. But another thing you really have to see if you go to Kishalan is Mielno. And this is basically like a seaside town uh, to, to the, uh, the north. Because Kishalan isn't directly on the sea, but you do have close access to it. So there was a special bus that ran up here. And it's your typical seaside resort. You know, there were lots of stalls selling things. There were lovely beaches. There were a few bars dotted around. In the su in like the peak of summer, it becomes like a big party town, basically. And oh, how lucky I was with the weather. It really, really <laughs> it was hot and sunny. But all good trips need to move on so my next step was to take the train to Kishalin, uh, sorry, Kowabsheg my apologies so Kowabsheg is again, it's along the coast lots of, you know, kind of old buildings um, dotted around the centre and the frustrating thing here was the tourist office was closed. It was closed on a Saturday, which was a nightmare. Uh, so I had to kind of figure out where to go on my own without a tourist guide. But I found a couple of museums and the museums kind of pointed to other museums. And so I was able to find my way. But again, like, just look at this, the, the architecture in Poland is so breathtaking at times. I, I think you'd struggle to find nicer churches in any other part of the, of the world, really. And their monuments stand out so incredibly. Now, Kowabzeg, yes, okay. So it had these lovely things in the center, but I was on holiday. Ultimately, what did I want to do? I wanted to explore to see what there was to see, but I also wanted to relax. 
any good holiday, you need to allow a bit of time. So I went on a bit of a trek and I decided I'm going to go to the beach. And along the way, I saw um, a couple of museums. This is a, a, a museum of like basically old boats that you can walk around in, explore. So, you know, there's, a, of course, a very big naval history uh, in, in this part of Poland. And it is very much a port city. But as you get to the, uh, the beach area, you have this nice little kind of wood, woodland to go through, nice park. And yeah, it starts to get a bit commercialized, of course, uh, as you get to the beach. And the beach itself was lovely. You know, it, it, it wasn't too busy. It, it was busy, but it wasn't excessively busy. The sands were just an absolute delight to walk on. Uh, I actually took off my shoes and socks just to, to feel it beneath my feet. And yeah, it was a, a nice little excursion. There, there are, of course, lots of boats here. So if you like boats, there were these weird bird statues everywhere. I'm looking forward to reading into those, see if they're, um, what the significance is, because there were a few of those dotted around. And I had to I turned total tourist in this. So um, once I got to the main, you could say, like, bay area, I went on a Ferris wheel. I decided to take a boat ride. And, yeah, so I was spending money left, right, and center. But in a way, this is what Kowobzeg seems to be geared towards. It really has so much you can do. And I managed to pretty much do... I would say 80% of what there was to do in the city. Okay, I didn't get to every museum. But I tried to make the most of the trip. It certainly wasn't cheap. <laughs> it was just little costs here and there. Um, of course, if you're coming from the West and you, you know, you're coming in with that kind of money, then everything's going to seem cheap there and you're going to have all these lovely little frills. See, there was a random wax museum here which uh, just caught my eye and it's like, okay. Okay, why not? I've been to Madame Zoo Swords. Let's see, give a Polish one a go. And there was this wonderful park area. Um, again, there, there was like this nice kind of decorative park, like going right through uh, the center with these wonderful fountains and statues. Really added to the atmosphere. The Amber Museum here is a... a a painting, basically, or a sculpture, or whatever you want to call it, made from amber. There was a small aquarium that was a bit smaller than I uh, really hoped for. But I, I tried to wander around, really kind of see as much as I possibly could. Because there were so many, like, historical places. There was this lovely mural. There were these wonderful parks. The only problem, they didn't really speak much English. But the next part of the journey, I go to Szczecin. Now, Szczecin is a big city. My first impression when I got there was like, wow, how am I going to organize like what I see and do here? And luckily, the tourist office I went to uh, was open on the Sunday. So, And they were incredibly helpful. They gave me all of these maps, all of these brochures. So I was thinking to myself, OK, I'm just going to prepare. So I just sat down in a bar, looked at my maps and just thought to myself, OK, I'm just going to see what I can see and try and work out a route. One thing that helps you uh, is this red trail that leads right around the, the historical area. So, And everything's well signposted as well. And actually, I made some friends on the first night I was here and ended up drinking down the river, um, you know, with this group of students from Szczecin. And I really, really like had a good time with them. Sadly, didn't get to meet them for the rest of the trip, but... When I go back to Stetchen, hopefully I'll have some, you know, some people to hang out with there. And again, it was a city that was pretty striking in terms of the architecture. Now, the thing to, to know about Western Pomerania is, of course, it's, 
history is very much tied with Germany. So a lot of these buildings are kind of the neo-Gothic buildings, I think, tend to be kind of a bit German in origin to an extent. Um, here was a, a wonderful exhibit where you have uh, like these underground, it's like a bunker complex that you can walk around and it tells you the history um, of like times during the Second World War, during the communist period. And this is the largest cemetery in Poland. It took me a good couple of hours walking around this place. It was full of monuments, um, very serene, tranquil place. But Szczecin as well, it just, it was so massive. <laughs> like, I'm glad I allowed the time I did to see the city, uh, because if I hadn't, I don't think I would have got to see nearly as much as I did. Certainly a lot of walking around. I mean, sure, there are trams and things, but you're going to do most of this on foot. There was this nice beach area, like on a little island, uh, just kind of away from the, the center. But there was also a lot of construction going on. And I found this in... It was a little inconvenient at times, but, it, you know, what didn't destroy the experience. You have the, the wonderful castle there, which I'll talk about in the main video in more detail. There were a lot of places to kind of go for views, let's say. Um, there's one place in particular, like, uh, I think, Cafe 24, I think, 22 something um that yeah had a nice little excursion to and offered a wonderful view this is me walking up the uh the golden way well that's not me in uh ahead in the video but me holding the camera and it leads you to this massive kind of part uh, I, I yeah this is the problem when you don't do the research on the videos you have to remind yourself what these buildings were this is a big official building uh, this absolutely incredible sculpture of like three eagles and leading to this incredible park. And to be honest, sorry, Varshavians, but I thought this park was a bit nicer than Wyzhenki because it was massive. The, I don't know, it was just such a relaxing experience. And then it kind of leads you to this wonderful rose garden. Uh, which is another one of these sites in the city. And, oh, wow. The only problem I have with Szczecin is uh, the museums there, the national museums, are only open certain days of the week. And even though I was staying there four nights, I missed them, at least most of them. But while I was here, I decided I'm going to take a couple of excursions see what I can see in the area. So I went to Stargard. And I was talking to some of the locals. They were like, nah, never been there. I doubt there's much there. But the brochures were telling me it was worth seeing. So I went there. And Stargard is one of these cities that I'm guessing wasn't too hit by the war because there is so much in the way of these historical buildings. They have this incredible... A uh, set of fortifications running around the old city. And, okay, you don't really need to spend long in Stargard. You know, I was there for maybe about four hours, and I kind of saw everything I needed to see. But it provided a wonderful diversion just to get out and see something new. And it was great fun to walk around and explore, really. Uh, to, you know, learn a bit of the history there, to, to see these great structures i really had a good time here it also has one of the uh, the largest stone crosses in europe i think it's certainly the biggest in poland which uh, i also took a small excursion to but i love ruins and i i love these old buildings so really i i had a nice time i found this wonderful brovar there which i'll talk about in the main video um but this was an excursion I was very uh, glad that I made. And finally, on this video, getting to the last part, if you survived this long, then thank you very much. I, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, 
I went to a place called Volin. So this was recommended to me by my friend Adita, who, who's from Szczecin. And it's a very kind of quiet town. And it's on this kind of uh, sort of island. Well, there's technically, I'm not sure if it's really an island. But anyway, uh, this peninsula, anyway, uh, to the, the north. And this town associates it with itself very much with the Vikings. So you see a lot of rune stones. Um, there's a whole museum there. Well, so, okay, more of a, one of these interactive villages uh, that's set in a uh, Viking style. There are like all these statues of kind of Viking warriors and symbology out there. And... It was a nice little excursion, even though the trains decided to be an hour late getting there and an hour and a half late getting back. But another wonderful thing about Volin is not just the city and uh, the Viking connection, but it it's um, it's on the water as well. So sorry, just uh, yeah. So these are this is some images of the little Viking village there. Are I look forward to doing a bit of research and figuring out the the whole Viking connection to this. Um, and it was just a lovely little walk uh, away from the centre. It didn't take me long to get there at all. But as, as I was saying, um, this is not exactly on the sea. But you have large stretches of water going around Volin. And it really kind of adds to the, the kind of the nature that you experience in this. And the nature, I think, is half the point of going to Volin. You know, the city itself, you're not going to need much time. But if you want to do a bit of a hike, get out and see these massive lakes and really just find a proper place to relax because Volin is certainly a place to go to relax. It wasn't busy at all. It was a very quiet place. And it was just an absolute pleasure to walk around. There were these burial mounds. Sadly, you couldn't go into the burial mounds. <laughs> um, but it was cool to know uh, that you had that aspect. And you go out into the fields and there's this wonderful uh, old windmill there. So, yeah, the, this whole trip was absolutely incredible. And I look forward to making the, uh, the proper videos about these places to talk about them more fully. But I hope you've enjoyed. And please like this video if you did. And, of course, many more videos, many more stories to come. Dozer Bacenia.